Right, we have a very weird and interesting mask to look at here that I didn't even know existed until recently. It is a Sieb Gorman BM13E-18. So, it doesn't have a proper name as far as I'm aware. Now, I can't really find out much information on these masks at all, other than the fact I think these are kind of a variation of one of their firefighter masks, but designed for military use, because this takes 40mm NATO filters. And all I know is the MOD bought a load of these, never used them, and has now sold them as surplus. So, this, is mar this mask is from, I think it was 1997, it says on the strap here. It says 95, 96, 97 on the strap, so that's helpful. The label there says Sieb Gorman 1998. So, as far as I'm aware, it's Sieb Gorman mask when they used to exist. Sieb Gorman's another one of these sad stories of, you know, a company that was around for hundreds of years making really good products, and then, sadly, they just got bought out and liquidated. So, what the mask essentially is, is it's fairly heavy panoramic vision mask with a really thick rubber. Now it has an interesting feature, inside it has one of those inflatable mask seal things like the S6 has. Um, unfortunately, I was a bit stupid because there's a plug here that keeps it, you know, the air in. I pulled that out to inflate it a bit more and then found I couldn't get the plug back in, so I was trying to pull the pliers to get the rubber stretched enough to put it in, wouldn't work. Ended up having to cut a bit with a knife so I could, you know, seal the rubber back around the plug. So if you get one of these and it's inflated, leave it inflated, don't touch that bit. Alternatively, I guess what you could do is once you've taken it out, get some plumbing tape and fasten it back on with that. Once I've done the video, I'm probably going to get some plumbing tape and just kind of seal this over so it's all nice there. But anyway, that is for the interior seal because like the S6, it's even meant to be some sort of pressure regulator thing. But obviously the pressure can't escape that because it's got a plug in it or a comfy inflatable face seal. So I assume it's the comfy inflatable face seal because you, once it's inflated you can't uninflate it without pulling it out. So at the bottom here you've got your 40mm NATO Stanag filter intake. You've got your exhale valve there and this is a bit weird because it goes through the oral nasal cup and it's also on a little spring. Which I don't know why but it works. And there's a voice diaphragm here. So obviously air comes in here, get air goes out there. It's got a pretty decent um, oral nasal cup in there. Um, so what I'm going to do now is put the mask on and then we'll do up the straps and then we'll test it. So if I fold these straps over if I can, if not I'll just put my face in like this. Okay, now let's pull these over. And now I need to make sure I've got my face properly inside this because I want to make sure the oral nasal cup's actually in place where it should be. So let's start doing it these straps. And the top strap weirdly isn't adjustable. Uh, it's got no adjuster on that at all. So you have to um, adjust it entirely with the side straps. I can feel there is a bit of a when I exhale that goes around the um, oral nasal cup and as you can see it's foggy so what I'm going to probably have to do with this mask if I want to ever use it properly is fill the thing up with anti-dim paste now I'm going to have to take this off and put it on because unfortunately how I've put it on uh, where the air blows out when I exhale it blows right into my eye which is really uncomfortable so let me see if I can take this off and get the mask sorted before we test it Okay, I've sort of figured out what the problem is. It's really weird. When the filter intake is covered, because of how the valve system of the wor uh, mask works, this valve opens up more and lets more air out. So, for example, now I'm breathing normally, it steams up. If I cover this, It's not a problem, so I really don't understand this as a design choice. It's almost like it's actually missing a valve that should be there, and I'm not sure if it is or not. So I'm just going to have a little inspection of that, and then if I can figure this out, we'll test it. Okay, I've managed to fix the mask. Unfortunately, what I've had to do is cut a P3 filter pad. 
and place it on the mask's intake, which greatly increases air resistance like it did with the SHMS. Basically, it seems the valve here requires a lot of air pressure to open. And if you don't have a valve blocking the intake, when you breathe out, the air doesn't actually cause enough pressure inside this section to open the valve. <coughs> so they can either put a regular valve here, or no valve on the intake, or they can have put an intake valve here, and this bit would work fine. But how it's been designed, it doesn't work properly. And I imagine that's because this was a firefighter's mask that they redesigned work like this. So anyway, <coughs> I get a filter fit check, so what I'm going to do now is test it. Well, obviously this is less than ideal. It's a shame because the mask seems really good fundamentally. It's just a shame that they screwed the valve system up on it. Anyway, let's actually get round to testing it. Okay, let's test this thing. First, the isomil acetate or the monoid. Right, so far so good. I know a proper test of this is to put a bag over the mask with this in a, on a pad and then test it that way. But this is all we're going to do with this air pressure anyway. So let's test it. So far, no smells. Um, let's all get that a couple of minutes. So, the valve system like this is either set up because this is originally a firefighter's mask that they sort of re uh, collab to, or I don't call it, uh, they sort of put a filter and take on to work as a military mask. Or, this is meant to be used with um, an oxygen tank. Constantly letting air into the mask, creating positive pressure. So that valve could open fairly easily. Or it's potentially designed so um, you'd have a powered air supply, which I'm going to have to end up buying one of these at some point when I see one for sale. Where you have a couple of 40mm filters on the electric pump that's constantly pulling air in for you. putting air into the mask. That's going in creating more pressure inside the mask which then should make the valve open properly. So yeah, it's a shame that they didn't just add a valve there which would have been very easy. Because if they did that this would have been perfect. Also if they'd actually put a tap on this not with a stupid plastic cap. But the mask works perfectly once you um, make the pressure system work right in it. Very good clear field of view. Once I've done this air pressure test, I'll test this with a rifle. Let's see if you can look down the rifle side of it. No idea how good the voice diaphragm will be until I review the footage. But yeah, no smell. Right, I guess that's been a couple of minutes now. I'll give it a slight bit longer, then I'll break the seam and check. But yeah, if they have got the valve system just a bit more competent, this would have been a brilliant mask. Alright, let's break the seal if I can easily. Oh yeah. <laughs> They're going to smell that. I will say the inflated cheek bit's good because it's quite hard to accidentally break the seal. You have to really pull it from breathing in to break the seal. So, what I'm going to do now is we'll just test the mask with the rifle to see what it's like with rifle sights. Okay, here I've got the SLR, which would have been in service roughly when the mask was made. Maybe just coming out of service to replace the L85, I guess. 
and as usual, being a panoramic lens mask, you can't look down the sights properly unless you pant the right eye and pant your head. Oh, my ears just pop from the massive air pressure it takes to breathe into the mask. Room. But regardless, as I said, masks like the Avon CT12 are probably the best type of mask you're ever going to get. Easy to use rifle sights with it. Tough and work. It's just physically exhausting just trying to breathe in this thing as it is. So there it is, the Sieb Gorman mask without a proper name. And, yeah, I don't know what to think about this. In some ways this looks like it could be a really good mask, and in other ways it's just got really stupid design decisions made with it. So, as said, the big problem being there is not a, um, if you look there, there has there is not and there never has been a um, intake flap on there, a valve, you know, to make it work that way. Which is a problem because when you have a valve like this that requires a fair amount of um, air pressure, uh, it doesn't work. So as you see, I've stuffed that in there. What I will try and do with this is take that P3 pad out. If I can get out without it completely disintegrating. What I will try to do is at some point fashion a valve that can sit in here and then obviously be designed so it just requires a bit more breathing resistance to breathe in but makes that bit work properly. So yeah, as said, weird design with this. Uh, if I show you this bit here, i put the filter down. How this weird exhale valve system works is once you breathe out hard enough or enough pressure builds up in the mask, this is designed to open like this rather than being a conventional valve that flaps at the edges. So the issue is that it's on a system that you know pulls it back into the mask even if you hold it upside down. The problem is, of course, uh, unless you have enough air pressure in the mask, that valve doesn't open properly, and that's why you have air flooding back up into your eyes. So, yeah, this is a bit weird, because this is a mask that seems like it could actually be really decent in some ways, but it's like they made the firefighter masks right, but then they couldn't quite work out how it was went to work with a standard 40mm filter intake. But as I said, maybe that's because it was designed... Um, you know, you'd have a powered air unit supplying air, or you'd just have some sort of 40 millimeter scuba tank on it, uh, or you know, just normal self-contained breathing apparatus tank. As said, it's a weird thing. The thing I also found a bit weird, and I don't know why, if I can see a reason for that, is when I was adjusting the straps. It seems that the straps are a bit uneven in this mask, so I just want to give it a bit of slack and see if they all can tighten in each direction fully because that was a bit of a pain where um, I couldn't get the head harness quite centred either which is always irritating with a mask. So that's it fully undone and yeah that sits in the middle. That's absolutely fine. It's a bit like the Israeli mask where it's got a massive strap. Let's see if I can pull every single strap totally tight on it. Hmm. Again, the strap system seems a bit weird in the sense that it looks quite good there, but it doesn't. It seems you have to put a lot more effort to pull the straps on that side for some reason. So no clue why. But in conclusion, the Sieb Gorman BM-13E-118 is an interesting failure of a mask, I guess, if it's meant to work with standard 40mm filters, which I assume it would because it's got a 40mm NATO intake. But it's one of those masks where maybe it's meant to be used in a different way. There's no information about this thing out there from what I can tell. But, yeah. If at some point when I, because I want to get one of these to do tests of other masks, I get one of those air supplied, you know, power units pulling air in, as soon as I get one of those, I will test this and I bet this will work well. Or if I can before then, I will fashion a um, 40 millimeter, not 40 millimeter, but just a you know rubber flap that goes on the inside. That's designed so obviously it will let air in by opening somehow, but when you breathe out, 
at least blocks a lot of that air from going back down that way. Not sure how I'll do that, I'll have to have a think about that, but um, yeah, as it stands at the moment, very interesting, very weird, I don't really know how to come to a conclusion on it, to be all honest. 